Yesterday we had a lesson on multiplying with integers. Today it's dividing with integers. And you will see that the same rules are going to apply. Uh, the rule is the quotient or the answer of one negative integer and one positive integer is negative. In other words, you count up the negative signs. If there's one negative, the answer is going to be negative. Here we have negative 16 divided by 8. So I think to myself, 16 divided by 8 is 2. There's one negative sign that makes it a negative 2. Same rule. I know that 30 divided by 6 is 5. I count one negative sign, so it would be a negative 5. Same rule. 40 divided by 2 is 20. One negative makes it a negative 20. 39 divided by 13 is 3. I see that there is one negative, so I know it is a negative 3. Second rule. If we are dividing and we have two negatives, those two negatives are going to come together and make a positive. I think about two negative signs flying together, and when it flies over here, it makes a positive sign. They come together to form a positive. It's kind of a visual you might want to use. So 52 divided by 12 is 13. I see two negative signs, so I know they're going to fly together to make a positive. When the answer is positive, it is unnecessary to put a positive sign in front of it. It's understood to be positive. So we just write 13. Two positives make a positive. 79 divided by 7 is just a 7. Here are two negatives, so I mentally think 120 divided by 20 is 6. Two negatives make a positive, so it's a positive 6. So I write 6. Here's the speed round. I will give you a couple of seconds to think about what you think the answer would be. And then we will reveal the answer as you check it. Negative 60 divided by 15. Negative 4. 45 divided by negative 5. There is one negative, a negative 9. Negative 27 divided by negative 9. Two negatives make a positive 3. 27 divided by 9 is also a positive 3. 63 divided by a negative 3. One negative makes it a negative 21. Here we have two negatives. Negative 44 divided by negative 4. Positive 11. Two negatives make a positive. Now, as we move towards algebra, we're going to add the increase the difficulty level a little bit. Here we have in the numerator, negative 15 plus 3. And then we have the division bar divided by 4. The first thing we need to do is simplify either the numerator or denominator and get it down to one number. So in the numerator on top, we have two numbers. Negative 15 plus 3 is a negative 12 divided by 4. Now we have our division of negative 4, 12 divided by 4. One negative sign, so it would be negative 3. Again, on the top, we need to simplify the numerator. So we remember our adding or subtracting by integer rule, 50 minus a negative 10. We want to add the opposite, or do our click, click. 50 plus 10 is 60. So we have 60 divided by 20. Two positives make a positive answer of 3. If also something you can look for is to see if you can simplify the fraction. So here we have division, and according to order of operations, we would need to do division first. Now, you could find a common denominator and do it that way, but you can always look first to see if you can divide and get a whole number. Because when I look at the first one, negative 64 divided by 8, 
I know that 64 divided by 8 is a negative 8. It's a whole number. So let's go ahead and simplify that. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. So now we just have a negative 8 plus a positive 4. And remember our song, same signs, add and keep, different signs, subtract. So 1 is negative, 1 is positive. We subtract and keep the sign of the greater value, so the answer is negative 4. I can do 50 divided by negative 5 and get a whole number. That would be negative 10. I can do negative 81 divided by 9. That would be a negative 9. So now I have negative 10 divided by negative 9. Same signs, add and keep the sign. So it would be negative 19. This is where we're going to plug in numbers. So x is negative 3. So in the numerator, we have negative 3 times negative 2. When multiplying two negatives, we know that we are going to get a positive 6. Two negatives make a positive. So that would give us 6 divided by 2, which is 3. 4x divided by 12. And x is negative 3, so we plug in negative 3. When I multiply 4 times negative 3, I get a negative 12 divided by 12. And we divide with one negative. The answer is negative. So it would be a negative 1. Here, x is being divided by 7. So in order to get the variable by itself, we want to use our inverse or our opposite operations. The opposite of division is multiplication. So we're going to be multiplying both sides by 7. We're multiplying negative 5 times 7. Multiplying with one negative makes negative. So x would be equal to negative 35. Here y is being multiplied by 3. So we're going to divide both sides by 3. Of course, our 3 divided by 3 cancel out or become 1, the invisible 1. When dividing with 1 negative, the answer is negative. So that would be negative 6 x is equal to negative 6. I hope this helps with your dividing with negative integers.